Hey, it's Emily, AKA Orbology, and I'm so excited to be joined today with Miss Bubbles to talk about physical collecting for the Nintendo Switch, specifically when it comes to Western RPGs. Over the last seven years, the Switch has really been the go-to platform for collecting purposes. And while there's so many amazing titles we can now play on the Nintendo Switch, unfortunately, they're not all created equal when it comes to their physical editions. I've talked about this a few times now on the channel, but one of the great appeals when it comes to physical game collecting is ownership, specifically owning the game where it's not reliant on any sort of patches or the internet connection in order for our games to be accessible and work properly. So for today's video, Miss Bubbles and I are going to talk about 10 different Western RPGs that you can buy physically and kind of weigh the pros and cons when it comes to buying the physical editions. Now, before Miss Bubbles and I get into our list about which Western RPGs we recommend buying and perhaps avoiding physically on the Nintendo Switch, I do want to preface this by saying that everyone is allowed to collect whatever games they wish. We just formed today's list, taking the perspective of physical media ownership and trying to avoid reliance on the eShop as much as possible. Now I'm going to kick off today's list with one of my favorite games of all time and also one of Miss Bubbles' favorite games of all time, and that is The Witcher 3. There are multiple reasons why I just adore The Witcher 3, from its epic story, all the very detailed and extensive side quests, and just its really fun gameplay. Given how renowned this title is, I don't think I really need to spend time to sell it to you, but I will talk about my first experience with the title, which happened to be on the Nintendo Switch here. Like many, I was very skeptical with how well this open world RPG would run on the Nintendo Switch. But after hearing how this was a magical port that happened to fit both the base game and a bunch of DLC on the game cartridge, I had to give this a try. And I'm really glad I did. I spent countless hours playing this game in handheld mode on my Switch Lite, and I've actually still haven't completed it 100% yet. And I do know there are better experiences on other platforms, um, especially now that it's on the PS5, and of course you can play this on PC. But I do think there is a use case when it comes to owning this game physically on the Nintendo Switch. Yes, there were extensive patches that were made after launch that kind of help improve textures and performance overall, but this is still very much playable in its original state. It's of course not the best experience, and if you do want to get the best experience, there are of course other platforms that you can consider, but if you only own a Nintendo Switch and really want to get into this game, I do think owning the physical copy and playing it from there is well worth your time. And speaking of games that are well worth your time, I'm now going to hand this off to Miss Bubbles to talk about a hilarious RPG that I've actually been considering buying a Switch copy physically for. It's Miss Bubbles and I'm so excited to join Emily today talking about the best Western RPGs to buy and the ones to avoid for collector's purposes. And when researching for this video, I realized that a lot of the Western RPGs that I really love on the Nintendo Switch are actually really bad for physical collectors. So before I get into the ones to avoid, let me share with you two that I think are worth buying. And the first one is West of Loathing, which is perfect for those of you who love an RPG that doesn't take itself seriously at all. This one's an open world, hilarious adventure set in the Kingdom of Loathing universe, and you play as a stick figure in the wild west your decisions matter and will shape up how the story unfolds and the shenanigans that happen will leave you looking at the screen many times be like did this just really happen right now the retail release for this one is complete on the cart but the one that was done through limited run games isn't so make sure you're aware of that and i know shadows over loathing is out as well i saw that it has overwhelmingly positive reviews it's also on the nintendo switch but i haven't tried it yet so if you did let me know if you'd recommend it to me. I've praised Serenity Forge a few times now on the channel, so I'm really glad to hear they were able to bring out a complete retail version of West of Loathing. Another game publisher that I think has done a wonderful job in the physical media space is Fangamer, and they're the ones who brought out retail versions of Undertale. This is a title that is best to go in completely blind, so I won't be spilling any details. But I will say that if you're looking for a very unique RPG experience, Undertale is one to definitely play, especially for ones who really enjoy character-focused narratives. 
And even though this game doesn't seem very impressive from a graphical or presentation standpoint, definitely do not let that be the reason why you haven't checked the game out yet. When it comes to the physical edition, there is a small minor patch that is available on the eShop that you can download, but it's not forced upon you. So this is perfectly playable offline. And the reason why I haven't bought my physical copy on the Switch yet is I'm actually waiting to see if Fangamer is going to release a revised Switch cart, which they've been known to do for both Stardew Valley and Hollow Knight. So I'm waiting to see whether or not this is going to be the same case with Undertale. And another game that is definitely worth purchasing physically is one that Miss Bubbles will now introduce. And it's a game that I've been eyeing myself, especially with all the hype around the sequel that's just released. If the release of Dragon's Dogma 2 has caused some kind of FOMO in you because you only have the Nintendo Switch to play games on, then fear not, there is one that is very similar. It's actually Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, and you can play it on the Nintendo Switch, and it's a good one to buy in physical form. This one is developed by Capcom, a Japanese company, but depending on what mechanics make you say a game is more Western or more Japanese, you can then argue it's one or the other. In all cases, I'd love to know whether you think Dragon's Dogma is a Japanese RPG or a Western RPG. But talking about the game itself, this one is perfect for those of you who love a big open world RPG where you can climb up these epic monsters and take them down. With its DLC, you get plenty of the content that was released from the game's initial release date in 2013 up until the last patch that it got. So expect to sink 40 plus hours easily into this one. It doesn't hold your hand, the story is not the greatest, but the gameplay loop will get you hooked. I played this for a while years back and I must say it looks really good on the Nintendo Switch and it will keep you entertained. Now the Switch cartridge does have a small update that you're gonna have to download but when you look at the games that I said you should probably avoid you're gonna see that this update was the most decent one otherwise we're talking about lots of gigabytes getting downloaded into your Nintendo Switch that will make these Switch versions horrible for collectors. When it comes to categorizing games like Dragon's Dogma as a Western RPG or a JRPG. I do think in this case, Dragon's Dogma leans more towards a Western RPG, but let us know down below if you agree or disagree. And the next set of games we're gonna be talking about are ones that unfortunately, we really can't recommend buying physical copies for. So if you must play them on the Switch platform, it may be worthwhile just looking into digital versions, especially if they're cheaper than the physical copies. The first game I'll be talking about is one that I really think most people should avoid. And that's because it has the very ugly logo on the front of the box cover that says download is required and that is for Banner Saga. This is a very thoughtful tactical RPG that incorporates a mix of Norse mythology, and it's actually considered to be very difficult at times when it comes to the gameplay. And while the story mode and characters are perhaps not as fleshed out as other tactical games like Fire Emblem or Triangle Strategy, I do think this game is well worth playing if you're a fan of tactical RPGs. But as you can see on the front cover of the box art, a download is required in order to play the entire trilogy. So if you do want to play this game on the Nintendo Switch, you may be better off just buying the digital copy, especially if it's on sale. But if you're not limited to just the Switch, I do recommend maybe looking into the PS4 physical edition because that one includes all the games on the disc without any sort of patches or download requirements. The next couple of games Ms. Bubbles is going to talk about are one that even though they don't require a download have very extensive patches that you probably want to download just for the best performance. So my first one to avoid is Outer Worlds. This one's developed by Obsidian and if you played Fallout New Vegas then you know the stories that they create are pretty intriguing. However, something about this one just didn't click with me. I really like the gameplay loop but I just couldn't connect with the world so I will be trying it again sometime. But when it comes to the physical version, there is a massive 7.1 gig download to update it to its latest patch and run it properly. So from a collector's standpoint and with all the missing updates in the original cartridge, I'd say it's just better to skip this one. My next one to avoid is one that I actually really love, and that's freaking Skyrim. I adore that game, and actually my first time playing Skyrim was on the Nintendo Switch, 
in vanilla, no mods, no nothing. I know mods just changed the game, but really that game is just so good. And I have the physical edition for it. That one came with a download size of 7.5 gigs and the bugs in there, despite the patches, can be game breaking. So for example, I cannot finish the Thieves Guild. I'm at the very end of the story mission and I just can't finish it. This game's wonderful with an amazing open world to explore, tons of skills to gain, which we all somehow end up going with the stealth archer and the dlc adds so much more content to an already massive game but with it being available everywhere else and again having such a massive update to download plus bugs that are game breaking and there's no way for you to fix them it just doesn't make sense for you to get the physical version for longevity and for being able to play the game years down the line when there won't be a way for you to download these patches later on i did play quite a bit of skyrim back in the day and agree that it's a fantastic game and when it comes to the switch physical edition i do own the copy and the reason for this is it is pretty playable without the huge anniversary patch that um, is now available for download so it might be something to consider getting even though it is now available on other platforms so you definitely don't have to rely on just the Switch version if you want a physical copy. But speaking of games that I've played back in the day, the next one I wanna talk about is the Bioshock Collection. And while Bioshock is not necessarily categorized as a Western RPG, it is a Western first-person shooter game with both horror and RPG elements in it. So that's sort of why I included it in this list. And I also wanted to caution those who are interested in this collection about the two different versions that are available. But before getting into those details, I have a lot of fond memories when it comes to the first Bioshock game, especially with how they balanced a very creepy atmosphere with a bit of whimsy when it comes to the retrofuturism design choices. I really enjoyed exploring the dystopian underwater city of Rapture and all the different morality choices you are given and how that was one of the first games that introduced that game mechanic. I can't speak much for the third game, but I did play a bit of Bioshock Infinite and I really enjoyed the Americana steampunk setting and the direction they went with that story. So when it comes to the physical release of this collection, the first round of physical copies, unfortunately were not complete on the cart and had the dreaded download required logo on the box art. And even though those initial physical copies required an internet connection to download the games, it's much better than what the physical releases are nowadays for this collection, which are just a code in the box. And even if you are a physical collector who doesn't really mind downloading required patches, I think we could all agree that code in the boxes are complete rubbish and probably should be banned from retail spaces, not only because of its deceptive nature, but also because of the eco waste it produces. Definitely, I think, avoid the Bioshock collection on the Switch at all costs, especially if you're shopping online and you're not really sure if you're going to end up with the initial print run releases or the code in the box versions of the game. Now we're going to switch over to Miss Bubbles to talk about another game that she absolutely adores, but can't recommend buying a physical version just because of how extensive the download is. I remember playing South Park The Fractured Butt Hole on PC and I freaking loved it. Aside from how crazy the name is, which already tells you that this game doesn't take itself seriously whatsoever, it's such a compact and fun turn-based RPG that is so goofy and worth your while. But when Emily and I were doing research about this video, we found out that the physical version is not the way to go on the Nintendo Switch because it comes with a download size of 5.9 gigs to experience its latest patch update. So as much as I would highly recommend playing it, especially if you love games that are silly and will make you laugh, I will have to say that the Switch Physical Edition is gonna be a skip for you. I haven't played any of the South Park games, but that one looks absolutely hilarious, so I may need to check it out, especially because I do have a little soft spot for South Park. And the last game I'll be talking about today is one that I've recently started playing and been greatly enjoying, but the retail physical Switch version is one that I kind of hesitate recommending and I'll explain why in a moment, and that is for Disco Elysium, the director's cut. This is a narrative heavy RPG with wonderful voice acting, I must say, and has a really interesting watercolor graphical style. This game involves some dice rolling mechanics as well as character building sheets that are very similar to Dungeons and Dragons, like a lot of other 
uh, CRPGs, but this is set in a modern, gritty, urban setting. I've been really enjoying my time with Jessica Elysium and really looking forward to seeing how the rest of the story will continue unfolding. But when it comes to the physical edition of Disco Elysium, unfortunately this launched with a very poor performance issues. This game has now been patched, so if you are like me and really want to collect games that have nice builds that you don't have to rely on an internet connection to access, it's a little bit difficult to recommend the Western versions of the Switch editions. There is a Japanese version out now that does have more of the patches um, on the physical game cartridge and of course plays in English. So from my experience, I do recommend avoiding the Western physical edition for Disco Elysium, um, the North American as well as the PAL region and picking up the Japanese edition instead if you really want a Switch copy. Uh, there's also a PS5 version that is more complete on IMAVID's website that I'm actually planning to get myself. So if you are also collecting for the PS5, that might be something to consider. And now Ms. Bubbles is gonna talk about her last pick that she recommends perhaps avoiding buying a physical copy for. Diablo 3 is the first Diablo game that I ever played and I played it for the first time on the Nintendo Switch, but I actually went with the digital version. When we were doing the research for this one, I found out that the physical version is not the best. Before playing Diablo, I mostly was familiar with games like Fallout, Witcher 3, which is my favorite game of all time, and Skyrim and the like. And the reason why I love this game is that there's something so relaxing about being able to just cozy up in a blanket and just kill hordes of enemies mindlessly while you're just chilling in bed. But as I mentioned, I got mine digitally and it had a whopping download of 13.3 gigs. However, the physical version still comes with a 3.3 gig to download the updates for the latest version. So again, as much as I would highly recommend you check this game out, I would say if you're a physical collector getting games for the Nintendo Switch, it really makes no sense for you to get this for longevity purposes. So there we have it. Those are over 10 Western RPGs that Miss Bubbles and I both recommend buying or perhaps avoiding when it comes to physical editions on the Nintendo Switch. And we both know that there are so many Western RPGs available in the system that we haven't played yet. So let us know down below if you have any recommendations of games that you really enjoyed and you think are worth buying physical copies for. And also let us know which games in your experience you recommend probably avoiding altogether when it comes to certain titles that are available physically on the Switch. I had so much fun putting this together with Miss Bubbles and we actually have another video together over on her channel that you'll wanna check out looking at physical Nintendo Switch copies for cozy RPGs. And we go into some details about which ones we recommend buying and avoiding on the system. I wanna thank Miss Bubbles again for coming on the channel today. And you definitely don't wanna miss our video over on her channel. So I'll be waiting for you over there.